Okay, here's a topic that a lot of people have heard about and a lot of people have talked about. And um, I guess it's time for me to talk about it <laughs> since I always duplicate everybody else's stuff. But um, leakage current of capacitors. So we know that old capacitors like aluminum electric lytics uh, go leaky um, after, they're, after they're old. And um, different capacitors, even when they're new, some have more leakage and some have less leakage. And uh, so I want to take a look at exactly what is leakage and how is it specified, what you should expect, and how to test it. All right. So what is leakage? Well, here is a... Uh, electrical schematic, a simplified schematic of a capacitor, okay? There's some inductance due to the leads and construction and everything. It might be coiled up, uh, so there's some inductance. Then there's some parallel plates in there that are, act as the capacitor. And then there might be some series resistance, so it's called effective series resistance. And um, there might be some leakage and we can think of that as a resistor across the plates, okay? And so we're not talking about this, we're not going to talk about this, and we're not going to talk about this. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about this, this leakage, okay? What is this leakage, and what can we expect? All right, so certain types of capacitors, like ceramic capacitors, are not very leaky at all. And uh, some uh, film capacitors are very, very good. They're not very leaky at all. Um, electrolytic capacitors are the worst, so the aluminum electrolytic capacitors, you know, the ones that look kind of like this, uh, these are the worst. And uh, that's due to their construction and the chemical makeup inside. Okay, let's look at a data sheet. Um, so I pulled these off of the Nichicon website. So Nichicon is known to build some of the best, so whatever specs they have, they must be good. Um, so here is a um, a capacitor that might be used in a radio. Um, it is a uh, a 400 volt capacitor, and let's look at the let's look at the uh, let's look at the specifications here. It says ideal for low profile, so it's small. Uh, low profile power supply applications, so it's good for filtering power supplies. All right. Downsize high ripple design, so it's meant to meant to take out those ripples, right? So it has a rated voltage of 400 to 450 volts. Well, which is it? 400 or 450? Why do they have two? And uh, capacitance of 27 to 120 microfarads. Okay. So you can get these in a various various ranges. So they're in the 27 to 120 microfarad capacitance range, which is kind of power supply range, right? Okay. So endurance with ripple current. So as ripple happens in a capacitor, there's an AC voltage on the capacitor. And as we know, it, uh, polarized capacitors don't like AC, so they can kind of do damage to the, uh, uh, to the uh, makeup of these things over time. So this is endurance with ripple current, 2,000 hours at 105 centigrade. So also high temperature, the chemicals don't work very good also, and they degrade. So uh, this is meant to be really, uh, really, really hard and robust. Non-solvent resistant type, uh, flux remover or something, and uh, ROS compliant. Okay. So the characteristics are there's a temperature range, and it's it's looks like there's two different capacitor types. One that's good from minus 40 to plus 105C at 400 volts, or minus 125 to 105C at 420 or 450 volts. So a little bit confusing on what we're actually saying here. They might be saying that um, you get one of these, and if you operate it at 400 volts, then you can expect this uh, temperature range, minus 40 to 105, but if you operate it at 450 volts, then you can, then you have to uh, live with minus, what, minus 25 instead of minus 40. All right, so I could go zoom a little further here. Okay, so the next thing is rated voltage. Uh, so capacitance tolerance is plus or minus 
So it might say 100 microfarads, but that's plus or minus 20%. So electrolytics have a very wide range. Leakage current. So that's what we're interested in. Um, so how is this specified? First of all, it has something that says CV. Okay, so we'll talk about that. So CV less than a thousand and CV greater than a thousand. Okay, let me get let me get a piece of paper here. All right, CV less than a thousand or greater than a thousand. Sorry about my greater sign. Okay, CV. Well, CV is exactly capacitance, capacitance, and voltage. Voltage, okay. So it's capacitance times voltage, C times Z, okay? So let's say we have a 100 microfarad capacitor, and we're gonna operate that at 400 volts, okay? Our CV is now four zero 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 zero. Okay, there's four zeros. Uh, uh, and the micro, it says here where I equals current in microamps and voltage in microfarads. Okay. Um, and rated voltage in volts. Okay, so we got it right. Okay, so the C is going to be in micro, so we can get rid of our micros here. So it's 100 times 400 is 40,000. So that's definitely greater than 1,000. Okay, let's say you have a 10, a 10 microfarad capacitor at 16 volts then CV is only equal to 160. So that's less than 1,000, right? So you need to calculate it for the capacity you've got, okay? And so then it says, if CV is less than 1,000, then the leakage current, I, is going to be 0.1 CV plus 40, okay? And if it's greater than, it's gonna be 0 0.04 CV plus 100. So what does that mean? Well, you multiply the C times the V. So let's just take the case of our uh, 100 microfarad. Well, that's kind of a big thing. Okay, let's get let's 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 not think about that. Let's think about this one. 10 10 microfarads at 16 volts, 160. Okay. So we have 160 times 0.1. That's 16 plus 40. That's 56. Okay. And so it says that we ha can have up to 56 micro amps of leakage current. Wow, that's a lot. 156 micro amps of leakage current, okay? But that's after one minute. What, is, what does that mean, after one minute? Well, once the capacitor is charged up and you wait one minute, then you measure it. And then there's a the thing that says after five minutes. After five minutes, it gets better. And we'll talk about that. Why does it get better? Okay. So this is this is this is the one minute category. After five minutes, it's 0 0.03 CV plus 15, and 0 0.02 CV plus 25. So you can see this is a much better spec than this is, right? So after five minutes, it's this. So in our case, it's less than a thousand. So we're going to do uh, 160 times 0.03. We've got a calculator. Oops, 160.03 is going to be 4.4.8 4 plus 15. So it'll be 19.8 microamps. All right. So after one minute, it could be 56 microamps, but after five minutes, it, it, uh, it could be 19.8 uh, microamps, okay? That's the spec. It's got to be better than this. All right. 
So that's the way it's done. It's specced in these units of CV and depending on how long you wait. So we didn't talk about that. Why does it get better? Why does it get better? Well, these plates of capacitance, these metallic plates, have an electrolytic inside. They have this, this goo inside. And this goo inside uh, has charge. And when you apply voltage on these plates, you will start getting positive charges on one side and negative charges on the other side. And then this goo in, in the middle will start to migrate, will actually start to move. And, and it will align itself with either negative or positive, depending on, on the polarity of the goo, right? And uh, this is kind of why LCDs work, right? LCD panels are, 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 are capacitors and they have goo inside and you apply a voltage on them and they change state depending on what voltage you put in them. Well, the goo inside of capacitors actually changes around also as you, as you turn them on, right? And so once you leave them on, they start separating and there's not as many of them in contact, and so you don't have as a big of a leakage path. When they're all jumbled up in here, there's more chance of it getting through. But when you turn it on for a while, these things start to separate and align to their neighbors and where they want to be, then there's more electrical isolation in, 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 in the chemical, and you get in you get better leakage. Now, if you have a capacitor that's been sitting around for a long time, Let's say you buy some new old stock. You go to your surplus store and you buy some old electric lytic capacitors and you put them on put put them on the tester and you go, oh my goodness, they're leaky. And I think I have some of those, so we can, we can do this test. I've never done this before, but this is I know the theory. Um, if they've been sitting around a long time, then these guys uh, have a tendency to be very leaky. They are they're just been sitting around for a very long time and they're kind of rusty. All right. And if you put a charge on it, you can kind of get them moving again. You kind of, kind of get them going again. <laughs> and once you get them going again, then they finally, they finally start doing the right thing again. They finally start going to the positive side and the negative side, and they kind of heal themselves. They're self-healing. And so if you have a capacitor and you put the working voltage, so if this is a 400 volt capacitor, you put 400 volts across it, and then you wait half an hour half an hour, that's a long time. You wait half an hour and then you rejuvenate the capacitor. I think they use a different term too. You restore the capacitor. They, they, people who are into this, they use some terminology for it. Re, 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 oh God. Oh, I think the paper has it. I think, I think the paper uses the terminology. I'm not, I'm not, uh, uh, reconditioning. That's, that's it. They call it reconditioning. <laughs> All right, so reconditioning your capacitor, you put the voltage on it and you wait half an hour. So we, I think we can try that because I think I've got some that are old but good. Oldies but goodies. Um, so how do you measure the capacitance of, I'm uh, not the capacitance. Uh, if, you wanna, if you wanna measure capacitance, get yourself a capacitor meter, right? So I've got this nice LCR meter, it'll measure capacitance, it'll measure inductance, and it'll measure ESR. It'll measure, it'll measure all those good things. Um, but it won't measure leakage. You need a leakage tester, okay? And so you can go off and you can buy a leakage tester. Um, I've got one. I can show that one to you. Um, a, another thing you can do is watch somebody else's YouTube channel and he's got a very fancy uh, capacitor leakage tester and you can go build his and um, uh, be happy with that. Um, or... You can just do it the way that I do it, which is just trivial. And why doesn't everybody just do it this way? I, I, I don't get it. Sometimes, sometimes my mind is just too simplistic and I just, I don't know. I'm a simple boy. So you want to, you have a capacitor, okay. And you want to measure the leakage, right? Which means we have to hook this up to a power supply. So let's put a current limiting resistor in here for good safety and we'll put a plus V on it. And then we will charge up that capacitor, right? Depending on the size of that resistor, that capacitor will take some time to charge, right? And if you wanted to measure the leakage, you put in an ammeter, right? You want to measure microamps. So what do you do? You put in a microamp meter, right? You measure the amount of current. 
n, what range of measurement device do you need? Well, look over here, 56 microamps, 19 microamps. Okay, uh, maybe one microamp, you know, maybe that's good enough. Um, a tenth of a microamp? I, 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 you know, I don't know. That's 100 nanoamps. That's pretty small. It sounds pretty good, right? So um, let's go ahead and do this. We will measure the leakage of a capacitor, and um, we will measure it a couple different ways. We will use a couple different instruments to measure uh, microamps, okay? Okay, so we want to measure microamps. You get a, pa uh, a multimeter that has a microamp, uh, a microamp scale. So here is microamps. Okay, and it looks like we can measure 0 0.01 microamps. That's well, that's pretty good. Um, one thing I didn't mention was when you measure the leakage of a capacitor, um, that's specified at full working voltage. So this one. We're going to measure this this capacitor here. Ignore, ignore that over there. That's just some 555 stuff. Um, this is a 220 microfarad at 16 volts. So we want to test it at 16 volts. It will have the worst leakage at 16 volts, and the leakage less than 16 volts will be a whole bunch better. Okay. So we want to measure at 16 volts. And so what do we do? Well. That little diagram I said, we're going to put it through a current limiting resistor. Here's the 10K. So we'll hook uh, 16 volts up to the top of the 16K. Okay. And oh, that's my meter. That's the wrong wire. This wire here is 16 volts. All right. And uh, okay. So this is going to be the ground side, but we need to go through the meter, right? So we're going to put the current meter here so the so the voltage comes in the top 16 volts goes through the resistor goes through the capacitor and then comes out the bottom and that's going to go through the meter to ground okay and here's our ground okay so let's watch the meter when i hook it up and it's starting out at uh, 400 microamps okay now remember what our spec said our spec said after one minute and after five minutes well, guess what? We're going to have to wait. And um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, we just have to wait. So um, you might have a tester and it might have LEDs and those LEDs go ding, 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 ding. Well, it's just a voltmeter. Those LEDs are just a voltmeter. It's just using it's just a voltmeter. It's all. It's all it is. It's just a voltmeter. It's just measuring the voltage across your resistor. That's all that thing does. Anyway, so here our little LEDs are going blink, 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 and we're just watching it. So you know why? Why build something? I mean, I already, I already have this, right? I already got it. And we're here at one, one. You know, it's less. It's certainly less than a minute already. And we're certainly at one, one microamp. Well, it's way in spec, right? It's way, way in spec. It looks great. And it's still getting better, right? So yeah, we can wait. We can wait until it finally asymptotes to some number, or we can just call it a day and say, yeah, it's fine, right? <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Um, so um, like I said, there's some, some self-healing going on. So that one minute spec and that five minute spec, um, if we wait five minutes, um, you know, that's what we're watching. We're watching that, 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 that chemical start to separate inside those capacitor plates and um, and heal, right? There's an exchange of ions and yeah, fancy chemistry. Um, so uh, there we go. It's starting to slow down point. Anyway, so this meter's working great, right? 0 0.8, 0 0.82, 0 0.81 point. Yeah, so it's doing great. So, okay, done. So you can stop watching this video now because <laughs> you know everything you need to know this is this is all you need to know okay so i'm going to prove to you that you do not need fancy equipment all right you you, you do not need fancy equipment um we're going to use something that's maybe more affordable um here harbor freight I got this for free. They actually give them away once in a while on a rare day. I don't know if they do anymore, but I remember on a rare day, I think I got this for free. It was one of those come in and buy something and get it for free. Anyway, 
it is a free multimeter. And I think, I don't know, they're probably $5 new, I don't know. Um, but guess what? It's got a 200 microamp range. It actually is a microamp meter. Um, so that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and we'll hook up uh, the positive side here. And we'll hook up the negative side over here. And let's go ahead and short out our capacitor. So we start from start from zero again. Okay, we'll use this uh, we'll use this piece of wire here as a uh, as a short. We will short it out here to the positive side here. Anyway, so that's kind of going. Okay, so now we will hook up our current meter again, and we'll watch it. There we go. As before. Uh, this is a 200 volt range. It's a little, it's a little high. There we go, 100. So it's doing exactly the the same as the $60 meter, right? Um, so there we go. It's going down. It's going down. It's going down. And I claim once it gets below a microamp, it's like, well, why are you looking any longer? You know, why are you wasting your day? Um, so yeah. So there you go, right? Five bucks, done. <laughs> Do not build yourself a capacitance duster. It seems silly to me. Um, now you might want to build yourself a high voltage supply. Then you could test your 400 volt capacitors at 400 volts. So that's a good thing to do. Some people build their supply and they build a current meter into it so they can do this test. But I don't, I don't know why you want to dedicate everything just for a capacitance test. All you need is voltage and, and a, a microammeter, and, and, and that's all you have. And like I said, you can get these, you can get these pretty cheap. <laughs> you can get these really, really cheap. Um, so 0. 0.6 microamps, right? And this thing's, this thing's not bad. It, 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 you know, it's certainly within 10%, you know, and it's fine. It's all you need. So there you go. There's your, there's your fancy dancy um, microammeter. All right. So, um, certainly there are other things that people might be worried about and maybe more finicky than I am. Um, so I'm not bad mouth anybody, but it's just, it seems like people spent a lot of effort, um, in, in, uh, capacitance, um, testing that just doesn't seem to be necessary. So let's talk about, um, let's talk about a little bit more. Now remember, um, it's this leakage, right? So we're talking about, um, we're talking about 0.6, uh, 0.6 microamps at 16 volts. Okay. So what resistance is that? Let's calculate that. All right. So we have 16 volts and 0.6 microamps is 26 megohms, okay? Equals 26 meg ohms, okay? So, so if we wanted to test our, uh, test our uh, fancy meter here, well, we can do that easily with a resistor if you happen to have one. Now, not everybody's gonna have these resistors, so, you know, this thing's good within 10%, right? For, for absolutely for sure. But I have some high value resistors here that are just laying around. So let me grab one here. Uh, let me grab, oh, that one's too high. Uh, that one's too high. That one's too high. Here we go. 100. So here's, here's a capacitor. This is a hundred mega ohms. Okay. 100 mega ohms. So a hundred mega ohms. Let's do the math. We love math, right? Everybody loves math. Um, 100 meg ohms, okay, um, times 16 volts, or 16 volts divided by that, what would tell us how much current we've got, right? So 16 volts, we should get 160 nano amps with this, 0.16 nano amps, right? If we put this across to 16 volt, 16 volts. So here's our 16 volts. We'll put that here. Um, well, we can start. We can start here. Sure, why not? Um, let's see if we can measure 100 mega ohms with this thing. Okay, 
So there, 0.2. So certainly within 10%, right? 0.2. It should be 0.16, but it's 0.2. So we can measure 100 mega ohms. Then let's try our fancy meter because we had one extra digit. All right. So where did I put the clip leads? Here they are. So microamps. Microamps, 100, 100 mega ohm. Okay. So there you go. 0.15. Perfect. 0.16. Even better. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so if you were going to build your own capacitor tester and you didn't have a microamp meter, you only had a voltmeter, then you would measure the voltage across a very large resistor. Does that make sense? And you would calibrate it so that a certain voltage across this fancy resistor was either pass or fail. Okay, so that's the way a lot of these capacitor testers are made. They're just made with a very large um, 100 mega ohm, 20 mega ohm, 82 mega ohm, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it. You can get a big mega ohm, right? And then you have a capacitor tester, all right? So let's, so that was what? That was 0 0.16, 0 0.16, all right. Uh, here, oops, sorry. Here, here is an 800 mega ohm resistor. 800, what is that, 0 0.02? Yeah, 0 0.02. So how did I do that math? It's 16 volts and eight, right? So it's 0 0.02. Um, so there you go. So this meter works just fine up to 800 mega ohms. It probably, it's, its last digit is, a, is at a gig ohm, right? So this will measure gig ohm resistances. Now, you tell me, you tell me, is there anything that you've ever built that would care if your capacitor had a gig ohm resistor across it? Okay, think about that. Is there anything you've ever built? Okay, I can only think of one instance and that is a microphone preamp. Um, and that's a pretty special case. But maybe there's others. I mean, people in audio land like are just nuts. I mean, they, <laughs> they believe in crazy stuff, you know, oxygen free. Uh, yeah, I, anyway, I don't want to go into that. But some people are very, very picky and they want the best. And maybe a gig ohm is just too much for them. <laughs> but a gig ohm, a gig ohm, I don't care. I really, really, really don't care about a gig ohm. All right, let's uh, let's take a, a look at a a piece of test equipment that's meant to do just this, and we will measure a capacitor that I believe is an old stock, might be on the bad side, and then we can see if we can what do they call it? Rejuve not rejuvenating, uh, re ah, now I forgot again. Please remind me reconditioning. Um, reconditioned that capacitor and see if it gets better. So um, let's do that. Okay, sorry if I'm ranting. I do like to rant, don't I? Um, <laughs> but I'm on the philosophy is keep, keep it simple, right? Um, if you haven't watched this channel, I actually enjoy it. Um, keep it simple, stupid guy, uh, kiss, kiss analog. Um, anyway, let's see, uh, let me look at this. So these, these are old new stock um, that I got at the junk store, I believe. And I bought them because they're high voltage. They are, um, they are 100 volt. So this is 10, 10 microfarads at 100 volts. Okay. So let's measure the uh, let's measure the leakage here. Um, I'll measure as high as I can with this setup. Put this uh, put this in circuit, and we'll hook up our microammeter. And we will set our voltmeter as high as it can go, as high as it can go. I'm using my uh, HY1803, 28 volts. Let's use 28 volts. All right, that's, that's as much as I can go here. So, um, okay, so we got 28 volts coming in and we're looking at the microamps and then let's turn it on. And 
All right, so let's watch. Is that in camera? Yeah. Okay. All right, we're about one minute. So at one minute, we're about th uh, 30 microamps. And maybe 30 microamps is just uh, not your thing. Maybe you just don't like 30 microamps. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and, and uh, I'm going to charge this thing directly with uh, the 28 volts. I, I don't have a, a, a hundred. I'm just putting 28 on it. And I put it directly across the capacitor. So now I'm just putting voltage on that capacitor. I'm just putting it there. And uh, we'll, we'll may, wait a couple minutes and come back and, uh, and uh, see if... Uh, yeah, we'll see if it gets better. There is a memory effect, uh, a, a recharging effect also in, in electrolytics that, that confuses issues sometimes, but um, they're both related. Uh, the, the rejuvenation thing is uh, the chemicals, when the chemicals go to the plates and then uh, they, they pull apart, and then when you let go, they move back again, and the, and the act of moving back, they can actually generate voltage, and the voltage starts ramping up again, even though there's nothing attached. Suddenly, the capacitor has more voltage in it. Well, there's energy stored in the chemicals, and that gets released into charge, so. Okay, I did that just for a short period of time. I just wanted to see if, you know, if it gets better or not. Um, let's see if we can find a, uh, let's see if we can find a, volt, a uh, power supply that'll go, uh, We'll go to 100 volts, and we can uh, and we can test this thing better. All right, I pulled out my trusty 8212A power supply. I think it goes to 100 volts. It, the scale goes to 100 volts. Um, we'll see if it we'll see if it gets there. So I'm starting off here around uh, around the same around 28 28 volts. That's kind of where we left over last time. And you know we're still we're still going down, right? We're at, we're at nine nine point eight microamps. But let's uh, let's ramp the voltage up. And you can see, look at that. The capacitor got a whole lot worse with increased voltage, right? Because we're having to charge it now, and you know, so we need to test it at the appropriate appropriate level here. So we're gonna we're gonna go up as high as it can. So it does it does reach 100 volts. So there we are, 100 volts, and we are at 800 microamps. So that's why you want to test these things at voltage. Um, so let's let this thing charge up. All right, um, it's been, a, been about a minute. Um, so let's let's look at that spec again. Uh, this, this is this is not the data sheet for that capacitor, but let's say let's say it was. This is a 100 microfarad, no, a 100 volt, 10 microfarad. Okay, so that's a CV of a thousand, right? So we have a CV of a thousand, and our spec is let's say the five minute spec is 0 0.03, okay? So we have 1,000 times 0 0.03, so that's 30, and we have plus 15, so that's 45. So it has to be below 45 microamps to meet spec. We're meeting spec, right? Um, and it's still going down, so you can wait as long as you want if it makes you feel good, but um, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> Especially for a uh, a filter capacitor, I'm more worried about ESR for filter capacitors than anything else. So, you know, there's there's all kinds of different capacitors, and tantalums have really really good ESRs, and but they're temperature sensitive. There we go. Anyway, this is going to be a very very boring video of us watching the uh, grass grow here, um, but that that's exactly why. Capacitors do what they do, and you don't need fancy equipment. Um, you know, it, it may be that you don't have a hundred volt power supply laying on your bench, and uh, or if you wanted it, like if I wanted right now to test a, a four hundred volt capacitor, well, I don't. This doesn't go to four hundred volts. Now I do have something. I mean, I, obviously I have something that'll go to four hundred volts, but um, uh, yeah. So I think the, the rule really is um, try to measure them at the voltage that they're rated. If you can't, use the highest voltage you can get away with and then cross your fingers. Uh, if you believe testing a 100 volt capacitor at 30 volts is enough, then good for you. <laughs> um, 
And uh, I don't have the experience to say that one way or the other. I don't know whether that's a fine thing to do and you can extrapolate. You can say that it should be 10 times better at 30 volts than at 100 volts or only twice as good at 30 volts than at 100 volts. I, I don't have that experience, so I, I can't talk to it. Um, but I can, in this particular case, know once and for all at 100 volts, 10 microfarad, it is 11 microamps of leakage current. I do know that for a fact. Um, and like I said, uh, 100 volts uh, and 11 microamps is 9 megohms, right? So 9 megohms in a power supply circuit, yeah, looks good to me. Now I know a lot of times the numbers are just used to measure whether things are going to go bad or not in the near future. And that's something I also don't have a good, good gut feel for. Like, like instead of it being 10 microamps, which I'm sure is perfectly good, if it was measuring, you know, 40 microamps, um, which is still within spec, still within spec, but 40 microamps, I would feel, well, maybe that's just a bit too high. And maybe I come back a month from now or a year from now, that 40 microamps turns into 400 microamps. You know, I, I don't know how these things die. I don't know how close you can be to the spec. I really don't know that information. Um, but uh, I do know, you know, easy ways to test um, capacitors. Now, there was a YouTube channel that I saw the other day when I was kind of researching this for the video where the guy had the world's best and cheapest micro leakage, current uh, capacitor leakage tester. It was just, it was the best thing I ever saw. <laughs> Instead of using a microammeter, he just stuck in a blue LED. That's all he did. He put a blue LED right here in the negative side. And the blue LEDs are super sensitive with low current. At a microamp in a dark room, you can still see it glowing, right? And so his tester was just one LED, and if it was bright, that's bad. And if it was dim, that's good. And that's all there was to it. Um, it was great. It was just wonderful. I, 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 wish, I, could, I wish I could remember where, where, I, where I saw that, but I just thought, yep, that guy, that guy gets it. Um, this, is my, this is my answer to his one diode. This is my cheapy Harbor Freight one. Yeah, this one works fine too. All right, I don't get many opportunities to pull this thing out, but this is the day <laughs> because we can use the leakage test. Um, this has a leakage test in it. So this is my uh, ZM11U uh, and it has capacitance tests in it. So let's go ahead and open it up. All right, let's plug it in. All right, so uh, I have a whole series of videos on this thing. So if you're interested in, uh, in uh, this instrument, it is a ZM-11-U. You can search uh, YouTube and you'll find a bunch of my videos uh, uh, on this instrument. It's an LCR meter uh, and a bunch of other things. So it'll test transformers, it'll test insulation resistance, which is really the, um, like if you're measuring a ceramic dia, a ceramic capacitor, you're really measuring the resistance of the insulation. That's really the measurement you're making. And this will, this will go up to uh, 10,000 megohms, so 10 gigohms. This will measure up to 10 gigohms. Um, so we could use that to test capacitors too. I never thought about that, but yeah, we could see if we could test a capacitor at 10 megohms, uh, 10 gigohms. Um, all right, so capacitors. Uh, there is a C, there's a C charge. We're going to want C charge because um, we're going to test voltage. Uh, we're going to go to DC volts. Uh, let's see, maximum voltage control is this. All right. So we can set this to 100 volts. This will go to 500 volts. So you can test the 400 volt capacitors on here just easy. We're going to set this at 100 volts. Um, but let's go ahead and get our resistor, uh, resistor, our, uh, uh, where do you go? That hundred, here it is. All right, so we have this uh, hundred volt, 10 microfarad capacitor. All right, so let's insert that. 
with the voltage off so I don't zap myself. In fact, let me turn this off. So this is safe. Safety, safety third, right? Isn't that what uh, Mike Rowe says? Safety third. Okay, so now we have our 10 microfarad in there and we can turn it on and charge it. We can take it up to, uh, oops, not wrong knob. We can take it up to 100 volts. Let's go, let's go to here. Uh, we can measure its value uh, with the, uh, with the capacitance meter here. And it's measuring nine microfarads. That's what, that's what this says, nine microfarads. Anyway, that's a different thing. We want to measure leakage. Okay, so the way you measure leakage is with the ammeter. And we will set DC volts to off. And we will then turn this knob. Yeah, it's this knob here. Okay, so let me um, let me get this up so we can get a good camera angle on it. This is going to be hard. Let me move the camera. Okay, so the capacitor is on the test where it says C. Uh, we're in uh, uh, high voltage mode, so. Um, shouldn't put my fingers on here, but this is 100 volts. And the way I test that is I go here to volts, and I'm measuring on the volt scale at the top, so it's 100 volts. And uh, so we go here, we'll turn that, that voltage off, so we're not measuring voltage anymore. And then I'm going to start turning this knob, and I'll turn it to here, and we can read the dial. Now, this is the milliamps. This is leakage. This is it's going to measure the current that's going through that capacitor, and it has three different settings: uh, uh, 25 milliamps full scale, 5 milliamps full, full scale, and 1 milliamp full scale. So 1 milliamp full scale is a thousand microfarad, a uh, thousand microamps full scale, right? All right. So we'll go to we'll go to five, and we see. We see that needle, needle not moving at all. So if you're testing a bad capacitor, like a really leaky waxy or something like that in here, and you turn it, if you immediately get 25 milliamps, you stop and you don't go any farther, right? You know that's bad. So you can go to the next stop. So this is spring loaded. You can't leave it in that position. You have to hold your hand on it. So here's five milliamps and we look for the meter deflection. I don't see any. And then we go to one and I don't see any meter deflection at all. So that's the way they were tested in the old days, that the one milliamp scale was fine and dandy. You didn't need anything fancier than that. It was ready to go. Um, so this is measuring, um, a full scale is uh, a 1,000, is, is one milliamp or a 1,000 microamps, and it's just not deflecting the scale at all. So yeah, it's just not, it's not measuring anything here, right? So, um, But we are testing it at at, uh, at, uh, at voltage, which is nice. And we can test the capacitance at voltage also. Uh, the way that I, I didn't really show that on camera easily. Uh, the way that I tested, uh, way that I tested capacitance was with a bridge circuit. So I um, uh, changed this knob here and this knob here. So this is range. Okay, so this is... Uh, uh, 0.1 millifarad or microfarads, micro, <laughs> micro was M in the big in the old days, so 0.1, and this is uh, and then this is one, and this is 10. So those are multipliers. So, okay, so this is in this position, it's one microfarad increments or multipliers for the scale. Okay, so then we look at the uh, uh, let me turn the room lights off. We look at the seeing eye tube, and the seeing eye tube gets uh, the 65 uh, gets wider and wider and wider, and then it gets narrower again right at the end here. And so I set it just for uh, there, and then I can change this a bit. Let's see. Yeah, this is going to be a little bit back over here. Okay, that's a little bit better, a little bit finer. So what I'm doing is I'm changing the uh, key, uh, the D value on the uh, bridge. There we go. So you can see it now. Um, 
it gets it gets wide and gets crispy and then it gets blurry again and you want it right at the wide crispy spot and it's right there and it is 9.1 microfarads so there you go um and you couldn't see that could you because all the room lights were off so what i was doing was i was adjusting this knob and making it crispy and the way that i got it a little crispier than than it started out with was to change this knob and this is the d value um, the circuit the circuit tries to mimic the capacitor you've got right so you put in an unknown and you're balancing it in a bridge with a known which is here and if all you're varying is capacitance, it doesn't match the inductance and ESR and other things inside. And you need to, to balance that on the other side to make the two exactly the same. So uh, it has this value here, uh, D, which allows you to adjust the uh, resistance on the other side and um, add some series resistance, I think is what's going on here. And then you can make this a little bit crisper. And then you turn this knob until you get maximum deflection. And then you read a 9.1 off the scale here, and you multiply it by one, and you get 9.1 microfarad. So that's the way that works. Okay, so I hope I uh, showed you how to measure leaky capacitors, and uh, I'm no expert at making them good again, the rejuvenation process, but uh, I couldn't find any that were bad enough to try to rejuvenate. Um, but I've seen lots of people do it online, and they, they seem to think it does something. It does make sense, the, uh, the chemistry of, uh, the electrolyte that's inside these things. It, it, it does seem like, you know, if you have a, an old battery, maybe you can recharge it a bit and it'll last a little bit longer. It probably won't last a long time, but it, it'll give you uh, maybe a little bit longer life. Um, it's like taking a, a non-rechargeable battery and charging it, you know, not a really good idea, but it actually does work a little bit, I think. <laughs> anyway, there you go.